<laughs> Good morning, Rotarians. Thank you for joining us. This club meeting is called to order. Hey, shortly I'll be sharing my screen and leading us through another fun presentation to direct the conversation. Periodically, I'll bring it down, um, that the screen rather, so we can see each other's beautiful and friendly faces and have more dialogue. Family and friends are always welcome to attend our club meetings, so don't hesitate to invite someone, like maybe your phlebotomist. Uh, feel free to speak out as you would in an in-person meeting, but if you're not using your microphone, be sure to put yourself on mute, or maybe I will do it at the cost of the club fine. Okay, and here it goes. Welcome everybody to the Fortuna Sunrise Rotary Club meeting for December 23rd, 2020, volume 25 of my presidential year. We have an amazing Rotary Club and I am so thankful to be a part of it. There you go. Nice, nice Christmas vest there, Haras. <laughs> uh, We'll introduce uh, guest Rotarians this morning and any other guests. And it looks like our guest and also our speaker this morning is Vitali. Thank you for joining us all the way from North Carolina this morning. Nice to be here with you. Looking forward to spend some time in the best club in California, isn't it? That's right. That's right. Yeah, at, at least in Fortuna. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. All right. So typically at this time, we'd be doing the flag salute, but since we're in a virtual meeting and it's hard to speak in unison and maybe some of us had a couple too many gingerbread cookies, why not a little American history lesson? Did you know that on this day in 1986, the experimental airplane named Voyager completed the first nonstop around the world flight refueling as it landed safely at Edwards Air Force Base in sunny California. That was today. Inspirational message. We are all on the same island, working towards different goals. When we take a moment to acknowledge another person and give just a little of ourselves to another, we set forth amazing things. And the four-way test will be by Seth McGrath this morning. Seth. Thank you, Simon. The four-way test are the things we say and do. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? And will it be beneficial to all concerned? All right. Thank you very much, Seth. Excellent. All right. And... Announcements, not a ton to announce this morning, but that Christmas decoration contest is still going on to spread holiday cheer. Uh, the Fortuna Chamber of Commerce invites Fortuna residents and businesses to participate in the 2020 Holiday Dazzle decorating contest. There's a voting map as well as locations, or there's voting as well as a map of locations at fortunachamber.com forward slash dazzle. Um, and there are goodness, I'd say a good 50 plus entries on there. So if you want a map to all the cool Christmas lights and decorations in town, hit that up and check it out. It might be worth a, a night of entertainment. We could all use that right now. Hey, so although we're not doing an in-person Seize Candy this year, one thing we could all agree on is that we wanted to continue our giving to the Seize Community Fund. This is a fund that was created to assist local people with travel expenses while they were battling cancer. Now this fund normally gets 15% 15 of our sales during this annual holiday fundraiser. So how can we continue to keep giving you ask? Well, maybe you already know that answer because we've been doing it for the last couple of weeks, but we do have a solution. During this entire month of December, we're gonna call on our club to make some donations to this fund, a virtual pass the hat. But in this case, it will be raise the hand or shake it feverishly. Uh, each of us can make a contribution to the Seize Candy Fund by raising our hand, private messaging during the, this moment of giving, but it gets even better. For each dollar that you give to the Seize Candy Fund, our Fortuna Sunrise Rotary Club will match your donation, making that dollar two or that hundred bucks, 200 big ones. Uh, so get ready to, to feel the giving spirit during the month of December. We are currently up to at least 
because we, we, we need to do a recount. But uh, <laughs> we're currently up to at least $1,960 of club giving. Um, so if you match that with the club match, that is almost $4,000. we are up to $3,920 by my math. Um, so we're going to do it a little differently this morning. I'm going to bring down the screen share. This morning we'll do, because uh, we're, we're just so close to, to our normal mark, we're going to call out three numbers. This morning will be $5, $20, and $50. And if you can help out the C's Community Fund this year, raise your hand and hold it up, throw up a reaction emoji, or use the chat feature to pledge a dollar amount. You can each even pledge each amount for a total of $75 of giving if you are so inclined. So Rotarians, Get ready, get set. We'll start it out with $5 this morning. Who's in for five bucks? That's just a cup of coffee. We can do that. Penny is in, I see Walt is in. Penny and Walt, excellent, excellent. Let's bump it up to the next one, $20. Who's in for 20? Is, hey, hey, Simon. Yes, sir. Is it, isn't it $25? This today we're we're switching it up, Ross. Today twenty and fifty for the next two amounts. I know. Herb, oh. Steve's in for twenty. Who else? I see Walt. I see Heck. I see Aaron, and I see John Sapper. And was that Chris Broadstock? Thought I saw a hand there. Yes, yes, yes. Chris Broadstock. Okay. And the last number this morning it's fifty, Ross. I know. I'm just making your your tallying even more difficult. Fifty dollars for fifty bucks. I see Keith Borges. I see Ross. I see Steve. Let's see. I see Herb Colby. Outstanding, everybody. I think by my count and and, and by Ross's because it was a little bit larger. We have reached our our giving that we normally do. Thank you, everybody, so much for giving to the Seas Community Fund this year. I think we're on track. Another successful year. And you didn't have to show up for four four or four hours and swap candy boxes around. Uh, I missed it, but uh, we'll do the best we can. All right, let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. Thank you everybody for all of that. You guys are outstanding. Herb, Herb, that must make you happy not to have to do the C's candy 30 days out of this month. No, it doesn't. It it makes me sad that we can't be there and sell all those good things to people so they can put on an extra five pounds. <laughs> Maybe next year. Spoken like a, a retired grocer, I think, yes. I think people are managing despite that, Herb. <laughs> to put, put on pounds, that is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, You're putting on pounds anyway? <laughs> Why not? Why not? Uh, <laughs> So backpacks uh, this week, school is out, and the next one will be January 13th. We've got Buster and Lori Garrison, as well as Jeannie Weiss. So hey, let's see here. Are there any club member announcements before we move on out? Any, anything happening in the community? Anybody want to speak up? Shameless plugs? Fun stuff? I'm not hearing anything. Hey, Simon. Yes. I had the uh, unfortunate um, event of being exposed um, to someone. He's exposing himself? <laughs> whose family had uh, the COVID virus. Ooh. And as a result, not knowing whether or not uh, I was infected, had to go through the testing procedure. And uh, I was surprised, normally things don't get to me too much, but over the course of uh, several days waiting for results, uh, there, there was a lot of anxiety. It was kind of surprising. And a huge amount of relief when the uh, results came back negative. So that's all good. I wanna put uh, $50 into the uh, foundation for that. Awesome, thank you so much. Uh I thought he was going to say uh, he was excited that the Ducks won the Pac-12 championship, but I will say it and you can find me appropriately. Appropriately? You're just leaving it open-ended? <laughs> how, how many times have they won the Pac-12 championship? Do you know the answer to that? Uh, five times? This is back-to-back. -back. And okay. so 
Five in times. unusual circumstances because the Washington Huskies uh, didn't have enough players who didn't test positive to be able to play. So we were a last minute entry and uh, stuck it to USC, as they say. Well, how about we give you a, a two bucks every <laughs> every win then? So okay, we'll, we'll I'll take it. So what would that Ross, be? Is that ten dollars? Ten bucks, yeah, Ross. $10. And thank you so much, Jeff, for the, the giving fifty dollars to Foundation. Aaron, thank you so much. And I think I see a hand raised, Bob Judavon. Is there something you wanted to share? Uh, no, Simon. But could you put me down for twenty bucks for the Seas Candy Fund? Oh. I just forgot to take my hand down. Yeah, we could do that. We could do that. <laughs> We can do that. If we did, if we didn't list you there, we will put you down. Awesome, awesome. All right, sweet. All right, let's keep going. So, you know, being an art educator, something that I've been doing uh, periodically at most meetings is doing a little bit of uh, art history awareness uh, piece. We look at an artist or or an art from a culture do a little deep dive into it. And then we have one of the Rotarians from our club do a little art critique for us and tell us what they think. So this morning, we're gonna be looking at the work of Mela Kohler. And here's a, this is not a self-portrait of herself, but a piece of her work there. Could not find any images of this artist. They were, uh, they were born in 1885 in Vienna, Austria. And Mela was trained uh, at the art school of Hohenberg and then uh, studied at the School of Applied Arts under the guidance of Coleman Moser and Berthold Loeffler. Uh, following her training, Mella Kohler worked as a freelance artist and Mella was a contributor to a magazine called Wiener Mode uh, and illustrated storybooks for the Conan uh, publisher. And here's some examples of some of Mella's work. Uh, these are holiday themed postcards and we'll do a little bit of a deeper dive into that with the next slide here, but we've got um, a girl with some dolls and toys in front of a chimney. Um, <clears throat> somebody with some holly, I'm guessing holly, like a sprig of holly in their hands, and then also a, a little sledding mother and daughter shot there, really cute um, pictorials there. All right. So in the, in the early 1900s, a, productive, a, production, a productive cooperative of artisans in Vienna, Austria, called <clears throat> the Wiener Werkstatt, hired Mella Kohler to um, produce postcard artwork. And several of these postcards were Christmas themed. The cards are printed using multicolored stone lithographs. So at this time, if you're not familiar, the lithography process in the early 1900s, late late 1800s included drawing on smooth limestone plates with wax and then using an acid to burn the image into relief. Ink was then applied to the surface, pressed into the paper. And if you had multiple colors, this would require a separate plate or a separate stone block for each color. And then you had to precisely register each one of those um, <clears throat> plates together. So looking at her work, I'm seeing at least, goodness, Five plates would be my guess. So not only did she have to think about the entire composition, how to register those plates together, but each color and how they would work together, maybe some mixing of the colors as the different inks work, to work together. So it gives you a little bit more appreciation for uh, the process here. It's, it's really, really interesting. And once again, more of these Christmas themed postcards that are just gorgeous. I love I love her, her characters, the simplified format of it. And she was also very into uh, women's fashion at the time too. And you can see that in all the, the ruffles and the dresses and the pattern work that's, that's going on there. Okay. And the last slide. Let's call on Keith Borges this morning to be our art critic. Keith, you still with us? I am. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. <laughs> Well, so, so, I, um, hold up. Before you start there, can tell me what you think about this. The uh, the translation is warm Christmas greetings. That's up in the upper left hand corner. And if you can pronounce it, I'll, I'll, I'll wave the fine this morning. Let's let's hear you. Go for it. Wow. Well, yeah. being Portuguese and not German, I'll give it a shot uh, or Austria, Austria. Let's see. Here's like in 
Vinopsh Group. That was that was pretty darn nah. good. Okay, okay. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about the piece here. Well, um, I really like them. I certainly do like the color, the green and red colors for the holiday season are very appropriate. Um, it's interesting. I, I can't quite tell what that girl in the front is doing. I guess that's her leg. Maybe she's just almost like uh, doing a, a ballerina thing with her legs in a, in a ballerina position there anyway, on the snow hill. Um, but the, I like the idea of the tree, that uh, the tree in the background that kind of matches the angles of her dress. So it's um, very nice, very nice. Nice, nice, Keith, that was great. Talk, talk to a little bit about composition there with the different angles and, and, and the tree, obviously in the background, the use of color, right? Those cool colors, the, the, the greens, also the warm colors of the reds. Love it, love it, love it. That was pretty good. And the pronunciation was pretty darn good. Yeah, Are, yeah. Is there any German speakers in the, in the house? Didn't somebody take high school German or something in our club, maybe? Any club member here? No? Okay. Well, uh, you know, because we have no barometer for how well you spoke, <laughs> uh, Keith, how about, uh, but I think that was pretty outstanding job. I think a $5 fine. We're going to let you okay. have okay. to give No problem. Very good. Keith. All right. Let's keep this party going. Why not which art piece sold for the, the most money at auction? All right. This little game we've been playing the last couple of piece, uh, weeks. Walt, Jack, and Minnie. If you were there this morning looking at these classic American art pieces from Norman Rockwell, can you guess as to which art piece fetched the highest dollar amount in auction, Walt? Is it one, two, or three? The first one is Christmas in the Heart. Number two is Tired Sales Girl on Christmas Eve. And number three is The Christmas Coach. Walt, which one do you think made the most money in auction? Well, I'm not, I know nothing about art, which I've demonstrated in your little game previously, but I do like Norman Rockwell and he generally is quite inspiring, inspirational. So I have to think, um, I'll go a little contrary in here. I'm, I'm gonna go with number two. Number two, tired sales girl on Christmas Eve. Ooh, you're correct. You are correct, you won. Yeah, that, that sold for $4.3 million, yes. And uh, the one on the left there, uh, 881,000, Christmas in the Heart, and the Christmas Coach, uh, 996,500. So good guess, Walt, no, no fine this morning. Darn, you guys, are, you guys are back at best of me at this game. Let's see here, all right. So weekly recognition. Who will be featured this week? Um, I've got no illustration this week, but I've got a couple of club members that I'd like to recognize. So without further ado, here goes. Drum roll, who will be first? Look here, crazy hat day. Look at this festive garb. Seth McGrath, can you tell me a little bit about this thing you've got stuck on your head here? It's just a turkey hat. It's a turkey hat. Turkey for a turkey. A turkey for a turkey. I like it. It looks fantastic. Do you have to cook the thing before you put it on your hat, your head? No, it's, it's my son's hat. He bought it. He, he loves hats. So I just decided to take a funky picture for Christmas. So but you, you stole, you stole that was that from your son. That's, that's a finable offense right there. Well, you know, your kids tend to steal from you too. You know, I, I, I don't have socks anymore because they go in my drawer and steal them. <laughs> they steal your socks oh my goodness <laughs> oh yeah i'm gonna take stuff from them too there you go well you look fantastic and the christmas tree in the back there and and your lovely wife i mean that's that's the, that's a holiday fit photo for sure um what i mean what do you think what do you think worth a, a hat steal funny hat christmas tree what is, what is that worth for you we had to dig uh, it in the vault you're gonna, you're gonna have you're gonna have to just uh figure that out because uh, okay <laughs> Okay, 20 bucks. How about that? Okay, that's fair. All right. Okay. Thank you, Seth. Yeah. Happy holidays. All Thank right. You. 
I got one. You betcha. You, I, you, you better believe it. I got one last one this morning. Look here. Look at this. I got a Christmas card from the one, the only Heckwood. Heck, you still there this morning, sir? Yeah, I'm here. Merry Christmas. So, Merry Christmas. Heck, you've been sending me Christmas cards for, for quite a while, and, and they're so sweet. And I got this one. Uh, it took Sounds like it's about to end. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You'd probably be off the Christmas card list after this. Just, just wait, just wait, just wait, Hack. I got, I got a little surprise for you. Oh, it's going somewhere good. Uh, yeah. Usually, this, this part, of the, this part of the meeting doesn't usually go good for yeah. those of us out here in the audience. It's going good for you. It's going good for oh. you this morning. Okay. Okay? So, hey, look at this wonderful card I got from Hack. It's just so darn cute. And and on the back side, it has all these pictures of Eli with Santa. But this this one picture in the the lower right corner here, I'm a little concerned about. Heck, heck, do you see that? Here, let me zoom in a little bit so we can all get a look at it. What? Eli? Eli? The coal worker? He's working in the coal mines? What is going on here, Heck? I, I, you, know. you are a magical ma magician with that Photoshop, apparently. <laughs> I mean, it, look. Unless this is the only card that was created that way. <laughs> it's, uh, it's fantastic. I mean, yeah. He looks so cute in his little coal miner outfit. <laughs> you got a very unique card that um, that apparently nobody else received. Yeah, well, you know, going back to the four-way test, is it the truth? Um, no, it's not. I, I did Photoshop this together, but, you know, being the president of your the club here, you know, you'd think it would come with some kind of fringe benefits, right? Like, like every club member should have sent me a Christmas card, right? Heck, don't you agree? Seems like a, an appropriate thing, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but you know what? You were the only club member to send me a Christmas card this year, and and I'm, I'm a little I'm a little bent out of shape about it. So no fine for heck this morning, but every other club member that showed up, five bucks. How about that for not sending me a Christmas card? Thank you, heck. Thank you, heck. <laughs> See, I told you it worked out in your favor, right? Keep those Christmas cards. Yeah, that wasn't exactly what I expected, but I think it was a great turnaround. Yeah. Now look out next year, Simon. I, I'm looking forward to it. Okay. I'm looking forward to it. But he well, won't be the president next year. So you might think about who to send the Christmas card to next year. Maybe it won't be Simon. Maybe it'd be somebody like Angela. I don't know. Angela Johnson. Shovel him out there. Oh, goodness. In, in, I might be getting coal for Christmas, I think, after that. Uh, anyway, <laughs> that is all I've got. So I'm going to pass it over to our program chair. Aaron Dunn this morning to introduce this week's program. Aaron. Thank you, President Simon. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce today, and uh, please excuse me for the pronunciation, Vitaly Bezrodnov. I'm sure he will tell us uh, exactly what uh, the pronunciation is. I'm hoping he does. And one thing he made very clear is that um, we, he's talking today about the Rotary Children's Fund, and this is not a fundraiser. He's totally here to let us know about the program and made that very, very clear. Um, the Rotary Children's Fund exists to promote goodwill between countries by funding organizations that contribute to peace, cultural understanding, and appreciation through the arts. Finding young artists, performers, and musicians worldwide to share their cultures through their performances and workshops, which features their talent, traditional costumes, and individual personalities. Improving goodwill between the people of America and other countries, uh, developing understanding of cultures, music, and traditions, that is building cultural bridges. Golden Gates, now, now about the specific program, program, Golden Gates Cultural Exchange Program. Since 2003, over 500 young people were awarded to be in the 40 youth groups that traveled internationally and shared their talent and culture with over a million people. For the last five years, organized groups visited over 300 public schools, universities, and colleges, and provided educational multi multicultural programs. And I'm going to let Vit Vitaly take it from here. And thank you so much for being here with us this morning. Thank you, thank you, Aaron. Uh, you pretty much went through my script so I can start with questions. <laughs> you probably bombarded with the different fundraisers. So thank you for making sure. We're not fundraiser, we're the program and I prepared some presentation. I hope you enjoy it. 
uh, and I, I would like to give you a compliments of the great club because by visiting and presenting in the clubs, I can feel it is the best club in California. And you have a mad president this year with lots of energy. It's excellent. So I'm uh, glad and honored to be here. Ladies and gentlemen, I prepared for you the presentation. I hope you enjoy it. For the best experience for this presentation, I would advise you, as you already did, because uh, you know you're under threat from the president to be fine. So I see that you're all on mute. Then, if you have the uh, uh, devices like phones or uh, iPads, put it in the horizontal positions. You did. You're very well trained already. I can see that. And put me in the speaker mode so you can see me for the full screen because there will be things happening behind me on the screen. And from now, I guess uh, I would like to start my presentation with the words, I'm very proud to be one of you, one of 1.2 million Rotarians around the world. I'm pretty sure that your club and I already witnessed that doing great things for the community, for the world. And I would like to share with you about the program that I'm passionate about for the number of years and involved with my or and other clubs. So my program will be today about the RCF, registered and maintained in the beginning as a Rotary Children's Fund and in international cultural exchange program called Golden Gates. And uh, just to be clear right in the beginning, I want to make sure that you understand we are not a part of the Rotary International Official Programs because Rotary has great youth exchange program. 40,000 students go anywhere in the world, exchanging it, very successful program. We are not there. We're different. Don't mix us with the GSE program. Rotary had it, but stopped it for some reason. I've been involved in this program a number of times. And since I have a 15 passenger van, groups coming from France, Colombia, Argentina, Belgium, and a few others will come to our district, 7710. I will be there because my schedule is flexible. I have 15 passenger van, so I'll spend a week at the time with the groups, traveling with them uh, through the district and going to different activities. Fun, fun, fun. Don't mix us with the, another program that Rotary just started, Rotary Friendship Exchange Program. I just being a part of this program before pandemic started and had great, fantastic time exchanging, being in Croatia with our team from our district 7710. So project and the program that I'm going to speak about is just one of those, like a shelter box that was started by the one Rotarian or one Rotary club went more or less successful, known or unknown, because I truly believe every Rotarian is the power with the experience and success behind him. Because we know when the good idea is supported by our Rotarians, we can go far. The program and the organization that I'm going to speak today was inspired by Rotarians, funded by Rotarians, run and managed by Rotarians. If you would allow me, I would like to relate my program to the four-way test. I'm pretty sure that everybody knows the four-way test we all uh, recognize it and follow that. But and I see, I don't need to ask the question, but I see that fifth thing is very important and it is in this club. So no doubt about that. So let's start. Is it the truth? The program that I'm going to speak about, the presentation that I'm going to present to you, the whole organization, is it the truth? To be able to better understand where I'm coming from, I would like to tell a little bit about myself, my background, because I was the original founder of this program back in the last century. And to be able to better understand, you, you will feel much better when you know something about me. This is where I was born, south of Soviet Union, Kazakhstan, Muslim country, surrounded by Muslim countries, lived in the international community. We were there and we were happy. I lived and raised there till 15 and the 15 I went uh, from my house, we traveled 3,000 uh, kilometers away, went to Russia, went through music school, music college, music conservatory, academy of Cal music and culture in St. Petersburg. And by the way, Simon, by being a student at that conservatory, we had a free admission to the old art museums in St. Petersburg, including Hermitage. And the contest that you just had, we had it few times a week. We will get from our teacher, this is gallery, this is the room you have to go. We go there, we'll come back and we study that particular art looking at the original. So great time. 
uh, by my 20th, because I joined a famous group in St. Petersburg, I traveled around the world. One day in 1992, we got a chance to come to the United States as a cultural exchange. And we spent three weeks, great program. And when there was a time to go back, a friend of mine offered me to stay here a little bit more and see more of America. So I decided to stay a little bit more and see more of America, then stay a little bit more, uh, then stay a little bit more. Eventually, I immigrated to the United States. That happens. We all immigrants here. We came this generation or a few generations before. That was happened with me. Since I came in and I couldn't do anything else except music, I put together my music group called Moscow Nights. And this group with this specific world music became pretty popular pretty quickly. Within a year, in 1994, we got the top chart in that type of music and that type of field. We would perform like crazy every day, sometimes a few times a day. Colleges, universities, performing arts centers, community series. New York City, San Francisco, Alaska, Hawaii, Europe, we will travel and perform every day. We were successful at that time, 90s. How successful we were, I would say, Every uh, one of each of us uh, per day performing, each of us made more money than most people in Russia made per month at that time. So I would consider it successful at that time. We had the chance to perform in Disney World, Disneyland. We performed in the Dollywood, if you ever heard about that. We were greeted and uh, visited with many famous people. And one of those was, oh, this is Dolly. She was gay. She's a very nice person. And she's involved with the Rory as well. So by being in that kind of uh, stage, being kind of, kind of known in our field, we were invited to do the presentation. And friends of us says that uh, it's a good people will be gathered there. You need to be there. Okay. So we came in without knowing what kind of meeting that is, what kind of uh, crowd will be there. But they said that there was a serious people. It ended up, it was a rotary meeting. Denver, Colorado, 1995. Around 800 people from different clubs around the United States who had connections with the uh, Russia and former republics and a few dozens of Rotary Club representatives from that part of the world, from Russia. We did our presentation. We put the flavor of Russia to that meeting. Then, as usually it happened in Rotary, we were offered to stay there as guests. It's a normal thing. So by staying there as guests and listening to this conversation, it changed my life. I'm pretty sure that every one of you heard, uh, had your reason to join Rotary. You maybe heard about wonderful things that Rotary does around the world and you want to join an organization. Maybe you saw that the, the Rotary Club locally in Fortuna did, uh, uh, does uh, good projects for the local community. You wanted to uh, be a part of this group. Or maybe president at that year, Simon, got in touch with you and said, you need to be a part of this fun group that visits every week. It's the best people in town are here. Maybe you had your reason to join Rory. My reason was right there at that meeting. I was witnessing conversation when one Rotary Club will stand up and will say, ladies and gentlemen, our club traveled to Siberia. We see that the old government collapsed. So the new government is not there. Lots of sick people. There are qualified doctors. There are facilities. We have Rotarians. They're doing projects, but the doctors cannot help their people because they're lacking medical equipment there. Anything as Rotarians we can do to help those people in this difficult time. Okay, speaker said. Anybody else? Another club will stand up and say we travel there as well and we prepared. We have the medical equipment and the storage for five million dollars. We'll be happy to donate it. It left over from the renovation of local hospital. Only problem will be how to deliver there. Another club jumped in. It's just like in your club happened with the fundraiser a few minutes ago. Another club jumped in and said, if you do that, our club will travel by our own expense. We have some technicians. We will set it up. Okay, but only problem will be how to deliver there. Another club will stand up and say, our club has connections with the Air Force. We fly to that part of the world. We have the connections with Russia there. So give us three, four weeks, give us equipment, consider it done. And speaker said, done. What's the next thing we can talk about today? When I heard that, it put goosebumps on my skin. But because I immediately felt I am surrounded and I'm in the company of great people who gathered here, not just entertain themselves, 
they're looking for the problems, they can identify the problems, they have success and the experience to deliver help to so many people so effectively. I want to learn about this organization. I want to become a part of this organization. And in the future, if there's a chance, I want to contribute by being a part of this organization. And at that time in 1995, my music moved me from Boulder, Colorado. Maybe you heard about Boulder. People called it a Republic of Boulder. Pretty prestigious and expensive place to live. I don't know how I ended up living there, but my music moved me to, from Boulder to Cleveland, Ohio. And people ask me the question with a smile like this, what happened with your life? You had to make that move. To me, I didn't understand humor then, but to me as to accordion player, it was pretty logical move. I'm playing accordion and the Cleveland is the capital of the accordion in the United States. I moved to Cleveland, referred by the district governor from Colorado to district governor in Ohio. I became a youngest member of the Lakewood Rotary Club in the Cleveland area. Around 130, 150 people would meet at the meeting, big and active club. And one of my sponsors was the gentleman. He was the World War II veteran. He was one of those soldiers who in 1945 met with the Russian soldiers on the April 25th on the Elba River, end of the World War II. By the way, on the other side of that river, there was my grandfather. So many years passed and veterans started to communicate with each other. It's ended up our Rotarians and veterans went to Russia, Stalingrad, former Stalingrad, now Volgograd, biggest battle of the World War II happened there. When they went there, they spent time there, they made a good friendship and they chartered a Rotary Club in Volgograd. It's became pretty active and nice Rotary Club. And when Rotarians from Volgograd started to come to United States into Cleveland, by being a Russian background, speaking two languages, I became a translator, entrepreneur, a driver, host, and everything else. And I was happy to be it because mayor of the Volgograd was guest in my house. That was a big honor. When I saw that people living for so many years since World War II on both sides of the Iron Cold Wall came together, they broke the stereotypes. They became a, such a great friends and got a, such a great relationship and understanding between each other. You couldn't fool them anymore with all the propaganda that come out from our governments and all the media things that uh, they come up with. They just broke the stereotypes. To me, it was a sign. I already had an agency by that time. I managed musicians, groups, and the companies across the continents. Uh, to perform and travel, make these arrangements. I had experience with that. To me, it was a sign maybe there could be a system in this kind of relationships, uh, organize it if it works. So I had an idea. I proposed it to the club. Few respectful people backed me up. Committees formed. We met a number of times for some time. And in the end, on the August 27, 2003, fully formed and registered. Rotary Children's Fund 501c3 was uh, started to work that was meant to build cultural bridges and manage them. I actually had a chance to travel and present this program to Rory President at that time. That was me when I was young. For some reason, I feel he doesn't remember that meeting. To me, it was stuck like a very uh, important and honorable uh, event. So we thought we will start to bring groups from here to there, from there to here, connecting the world. And people and companies will kind of support us and will say, you guys going to the right direction. You need some help. It didn't happen. So we pretty much had to put together the system, connect with the Rotary Clubs in different countries, connect with the educational institutions, select young people, help them to put together the program that will represent their country, make the arrangements through the United States so they can travel, meet with the people and have a chance to present this program, represent their country, build the cultural bridges between countries and convince people and organization. This is important program and uh, it's worthy to be supported. And uh, pretty much main activity for our organization from that point became international cultural exchange program called Golden Gates. Why Golden Gates? Not because Golden Gates Bridge, where you live in San Francisco, no, no. Remember, I uh, by that time, I lived in Cleveland, Ohio. Cleveland, for your information, doesn't have Golden Gate Bridge. 
not even because there's a Golden Gate structure behind me. It's in downtown of Kyiv, Ukraine, 1,000 years old, symbolic building called Zala uh, Golden Gates. Not even there, but because one of the first groups who participated in the program was the group called Zalati Varata, translated to English, Golden Gates. What it's really mean? Gates, Golden Gates to your heart, sincere heart to heart, soul to soul connection between people when you really know what the friendship means, when you're ready to support your friends and when you trust your friends. Without that would be appropriate name for the program, Zalatei Varata, and we decided to use it in the English interpretation, Golden Gates. Is it fair to all concerned? Concerned in these people, who people concerned and parties concerned? I guess participants are the main concern party here. Since 2003, as Aaron said, we had over 40 different groups from a couple dozen different countries who came to the United States from two to five weeks, visiting between 10 to 25 states, presenting program each group up to 50,000 people at the trip. So far, we reached over 1 million people. We built the bridges, cultural bridges with the countries, Russia, Ukraine, Armenia, Lithuania, Kazakhstan, Georgia, and few others. When young people prepare the program about their culture and proud of it, and come here and learn about the United States, they are really breaking stereotypes. Not only your stereotypes, because how much do you know about Armenia when they come and visit with you? Or Georgia, except that Georgia there is a state. Not much. If you didn't see the movie Borat, you probably don't know anything about Kazakhstan. But here the young people from that country will come and will prepare. They will blow your mind with the information and with the connection. You will most likely you fall in love with that country. But here the young people come and present the program, putting everything related to their country with the great quality of the art. There will be dance, singing, instrumentals, classical, ballets, choirs, etc., and different forms of arts. They break their stereotypes as well, because most of them who come here from 16 to 21, they were born before 2000 and right after 2000. So they know about us living here in the United States from Hollywood movies. Do you want to be known from Hollywood movies? No. And there's lots of stereotypes that breaking. I witnessed that. When they travel, they visit and they see all the beautiful places in the United States. They visit museums, art museums, historical museums, local culture, local traditions of one or another state. They visit national landmarks, capital of the United States, national parks, etc. And by traveling from New York City to California and from California by the South Bay, they see all these places squeezed in the four or five weeks tour. All these places that we are here in the United States planning to see and visit. But when we retired, when we buy a motor home and for six months, <laughs> slowly traveling around the United States. But here, imagine putting this 12,000 miles in the four or five weeks into uh, uh, and squeeze it, all the plans there. And when the group's performing, around 65% of all the programs that they present happen to be in the public schools, private schools, colleges, and universities. The groups prepare the VISTIC study guide, everything related to their country. And two months before we send it to the schools, to the colleges, the students learn about that particular country. And in the end, the group will come and will present the program in the form of assembly, workshop, presentation, class visit, residency, etc. Like, let's say we'll come to Los Angeles. Disney Performing Arts Center in Los Angeles has the educational department, 2,000 schools. They will book us solidly for a week, going for to the four weeks per day. When we come to the Phoenix, Arizona, the district will rent the 2,500 seats auditorium in the high school and bring the old kids from the district for the number of days, one of the another. We will perform well for 20,000 students within just three, four days. And it happens everywhere in all the states. So it's very, very good uh, connection and very good educational part. And uh, will it build goodwill and better friendship? I mean, from the things that you heard so far, what do you think? When young people coming from different countries are actually connecting the world, making a personal connection with you, proudly representing their own culture, tradition here to United States, and want and love to learn about United States, it definitely 
make the better uh, goodwill and better friendship for sure. But will it be beneficial to all concerned? I would say to the young people who participate in this program, chance to come to United States without being in the program is smaller than the chance to become an astronaut and go to the moon in their own country. I mean, I'm just a little bit go a little bit uh, inflating thing, but uh, truly the United States is pretty closed for the countries like Ukraine or Russia. It's pretty difficult. But here they have the opportunity to come, see so much of the United States, make friends, learn about the United States. It's definitely beneficial for them. If they go by their own experience, we'll say just a visa to get to United States permission to come here will cost their parents one month salary. And when they apply for that, the embassy will take their money, but they will not guarantee. And the chance that they will get the visa will be probably 15% or less and they don't get the return for their money. So that's the system. And for the young people here, schools and the colleges, is this uh, beneficial? For the young people, it's a window to the world to see and experience different cultures with this kind of work from other uh, young people from different country, to let them know that the world is much bigger than just a town, just a state, or even the United States. Teachers and parents will come and will say thank you for this exposure that often our kids didn't have and many of them will not have in their life. Colleges and universities everywhere we travel, they love to have these groups as part of in the college and universities invite us. Cultural events through the, through the country, through the United States, love to have these groups and we're always scheduling where from 500 to 10,000 people would come to see these presentations. Different denominational churches, they love to bring these groups in, often host them, show this is the free country. We have the democracy, we have a free uh, to believe in. This is our faith and we want to learn where you came from. For the senior citizens, it's always a gift to see this kind of program because they lived this life. They performed these traditions in the 50s and 60s and they learn where they came from. Every time when we travel, we schedule and visit between 10 to 25 Rotary Clubs presenting programs at the club meetings, social events, fundraisers, etc. And often present the programs in the places that people, uh, uh, Rotary Clubs support, like a uh, Boys and Girls Club, summer camp, special schools. And by performing everywhere, like in the performing arts centers, like Kodak Theater, Carnegie Hall, uh, Olympic Games, concert series is everywhere, supported by the people like Senator Durbin uh, on my background and uh, different senators and the congressmen, ambassadors of different countries, because every time group will come, they will do presentation in the embassy or related in Washington DC. And all media will say, this is the cultural ambassadors of their country. They did more for their country than diplomats did for the last 10 years. And often, greeted by the influential and known people like Lloyd George, Supreme Judge of Las Vegas and Nevada, mayors of different cities. And uh, we're getting lots of publicity from newspapers, from the media, from the TVs and everywhere. We'll put the stamp and we'll say, Rotary Club of Fortuna, right? So this event or sponsor this event. This is just a one of the projects and the tools that give us Rotarians opportunity to connect the world. How many of you had, who is listening presentation had chance to go to the Rotary conventions before? It's a great feeling, Ross. When you go there, Frank, you can really feel between 15, 25,000 people when you're there, buzz. I mean, you can feel the force there, like in the Star Wars. But if you go convention, especially there, you can cl very clearly feel and see how much effort and energy Rotary puts to bring young people into the organization, to introduce the idea of Rory. So they grow leaders and the businessmen like uh, our president Simon and join the organization later and now. And uh, when the Taranta convention, let's say, when you come there, you can see, you could see by sitting there 15,000 Rotarians that a thousand Rotor actors will run to the front of the stage, make lots of noise, crazy noise. And we're there, we see them, we hear them, we feel them. They're part of us, they're our future, we are proud of this. When you go to convention in Hamburg, young people went to the big stage. I would, I would like to be there one day, but they went there with the flags of their country saying, this is the, our country, our Rotary is there and we are proud to be part of it. So I think we're contributing that way as well because every uh, young person who participate in the program 
got fired and uh, inspired with the rotary ideas by me meeting with you and doing things by participating in the project often they'll come back they join rotary exchange program rotaract interact and this club in the background of me this ukrainian group they went through they came back got in touch with the rotary clubs and district in ukraine they formed 50 people rotaract club it's happening with every country one of the girls is just one of the example participated in the program when she was 17 went back graduate university came back to the united states got her master and now she's teaching in nc state she bought the house next to me bigger house and got married and two months ago she had her first baby make us feel proud you probably have questions how we work what's the main power and finances pretty much uh, by traveling with the one group, we raise money and our finances to a next group to give the opportunity to have the same kind of experience. So we're supported by the art, arts organization, educational organizations. We get some checks from the Rotary Foundation, from the private clubs, private organizations, Walmart sponsoring educational events through the country, Mercedes, a few colleges and universities. And if you ever think, oh, if you guys coming this way, you maybe need to visit us. If they will come, they will come this way. 15 passenger van with the 15 people inside preparing the program and everything that they need will be there in the trailer. Sound system, all the decoration that they need for presentation, personal belongings, suitcases, even sleeping bags for everybody just in case we stuck someplace. For some reason, I feel that some of you had chance to travel on a mission trip outside. Can you uh, imagine yourself just for a second you're traveling to the other country, other continent where people speak different language. You're Rotarian. There's a 15 young people, Rotary actors with you from uh, six, uh, let's say 18 years old. You travel through the place like Texas or Nebraska, 300 miles, nothing in the front of you, 300 miles, nothing big. You're traveling on the highway and the van breaks. 80 degrees outside, everybody goes 80. You're sitting in the van on the side of the highway. Young people want to eat, want to drink, want to go to bathroom. You're a person in charge. The van doesn't show us any signs of life. You're there with the 15 passenger van with the with full trailer and 15 kids. What do you do? How do you feel? Can you imagine yourself just for a second? Panic? Sweat? No. Nah. You just make a call. I've been in this situation a couple of times. Make a call to the local Rotary Club, closest one, say, guys, you don't have to do anything, but this is who we are. This is what we do. Can you give us a little hint? In the 30, 40 minutes, people will come, few cars with the pizzas, will feed young people, accommodate them, help us put back a vehicle on the road, send us back, and we become a best friends. Best friendships come up from these situations. We'll become friends, we'll exchange, we'll visit with each other. And every time when we start conversation, we'll say, do you remember that funny situation, how we met when you stuck on the road in the middle of nowhere? No, it wasn't funny. But after hearing how important for us, for Rotarians, to be uh, in a reliable vehicle and uh, travel with the young people, promoting the world peace and multicultural education and guide the young people, few Rotary clubs throwing a few bucks in the bucket, Mercedes-Benz signed up as a co-sponsor and we got this. 15 passenger 2020 Mercedes-Benz Sprinter van that will serve the program for the next number of years and allow us to bring the groups to your club, to your community, your town, and many of them through the United States. When we raise more money than we need on the tours, we give it to other Rotary clubs who uh, make the projects related to other children who cannot participate in these programs. Like one of the Rotary clubs bought the washing and drying machines in Chile. And we made the life for so many children easier. Another Rotary Club used our money and bought shoes for all kids in Bulgaria. So far, we raised over $100,000 and gave it away for these projects. Right now, it's difficult to fundraise, but the project that we're working right now, 7500 bucks. That will be doubled by the district, that will be doubled by the Rotary Matching Grant, and the Rotary Club in the district in Ukraine will come up with over $20,000 for $50,000. We'll buy the medical equipment, who will do the procedures for laser procedures to the newborn babies. And they actually, if the kids get this operation, they will see. If they don't get this operation, they will be blind. The project, Ukraine and the United States, called See My Mom. And this is what we're uh, right now working on. If the kids and these groups coming through the area, I will encourage you to come and visit one of these programs and maybe host them for the day or two. So they have opportunity to bring this program to the club 
to the social events, for the community, to the schools, to the senior citizens, and just bring it out and let know we are Rotarians, and this is just one of the ways that we are connecting the world. If you're thinking, if we host these young people, how we communicate, they're all the time from different countries. That's right, but they take English as a second language most of the times. Miami University sponsored the project, and the students take the courses at the Miami University for the Miami University's expense, just to make sure you feel comfortable and they feel comfortable to communicating and staying with you, making friends. And by concluding my pre uh, presentation today, ladies and gentlemen, if from everything what I said, you feel it's just a fun, touristy program for the young people to see United States, experience United States, fun, fun, fun. You're wrong. Just consider how much travel they have to do, up to 12, 14,000 miles for four or five weeks. How many presentations that they have to, to present this program to up to 50,000 people. It's just a travel, presenting, meeting people, travel, sleeping in the sleeping bags, presenting, travel for five weeks. Sometimes somebody breaks the leg, everything changes then. Sometimes the vehicle will break, so the tire will blow off in the middle of the night when you travel from one place to another and you're staying on the highway and dealing with that. Sometimes somebody gets the flu and everybody gets the flu, but show must go on. Nothing stops. We just adapt and support each other. In the four or five weeks, they go back exhausted, back to their country. They will sleep for two weeks. And after that, for years, they will call and will thank us for the great impact that this program and participation in this program made to their lives. By being a part of this program and organization for a number of times traveling with the youth and doing this work, I can prove you. For everybody involved, Rotarian, not Rotarian, performer, sponsor, supporter, host, this program and organization is truly opportunity for service above self. If you'd like to learn more about the program, there's a YouTube channel and young people share about their videos, about their experiences from all years. There's a Facebook page. The post about this meeting is there and the latest news are there on the Facebook. There's a website address, Rotary Children's Fund and all the information about the organization is there. Uh, Aaron, it's not a fundraiser, a fundraiser, but if you feel this kind of program is worth it to be supported, there is a button for that on the website. And the rotor actors and interactors who participate in the program, they said anybody who support this program before New Year, they will send the personal gift for the Christmas tree and uh, thank you card. And while young people in the background of me will tell you, Rotarians, thank you for that great experience that they got to learn about United States, learn about Rory, represent proudly their country here in the United States and build another bridge between United States, their country and the world, I'll be happy to take any questions. <clears throat> Amazing. Is there any club members that have any questions? Thank you so much. That was, uh, that was a wonderful presentation. Um, uh, I, I saw similar instances to my own youth uh, with the American group uh, called Up With People, which I just looked up while speaking to you and it was still continuing. And uh, I've always been in favor of these cultural exchanges, especially with young people. And I, I really uh, support your efforts. Thank you, thank you, I appreciate it. Yeah, we're enjoying it very much. By the way, in the chat, I put some uh, links to all these things. As soon as we finish presentation, it will disappear. So if you like to copy it and visit some of those pages that I was talking about, it's right there. Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? Because if you don't have any questions or have uh, little questions there, one of two things happened today at the presentation. One of those, my, my North Carolina accent was so strong you couldn't understand anything, or I fitted so much information that I covered all the topics. <laughs> I think it was number two. <laughs> you did great. Thank you so much. <clears throat> all right. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you again. And everybody's applauding, you know. <laughs> you. Um, awesome. Thank you, Vitaly. I pre appreciate it so much for coming and, and sharing this and, and your love and passion for music and cultural exchange. It, it definitely comes across. And what a what a cool presentation, too, how your slides are behind you, too, with the, the video and stuff. Very well uh, presented. We really appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> in the sake of getting everybody out of here at a normal time around 8, I'm going to rush through the drawing and then we'll get you on your way. Okay.
So first, the tickets. Let's see whose name is on the ticket. You could win Untold Fortunes or 85 bucks, I think it is, right, Ross? Yes, okay. Club member's not here. Let's see, okay, okay. Aaron Dunn, Aaron Dunn, yes, it's you. Will you win? All right, let's see, and the ball, let's see, what? Oh my goodness, look at that. The golden ball, Aaron Dunn, you won, 85 bucks. Oh, what, gonna go to the casino? Maybe uh, take Ross out to that uh, all you can eat uh, diner or any plans, big plans? Pay my fines. Okay, there we go. That's <laughs> and you've been racking them up. Okay. Any anybody else have anything that they would like to bring to the club before we uh, part our ways this week? All right. I'm not seeing any hands raised. Thank you, Vitaly, so much once again for coming all the way from North Carolina <laughs> to present to us this morning. Thank you, all the club members. Uh, have a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, whatever you celebrate. Uh, thank you for showing up this week and have a marvelous day. We'll see you soon. This club meeting is adjourned.